idea for a short story. Ladino, the language of the songs which make up Sara Aroesti's music, was the language of the Mediterranean Jews whose forefathers were expelled from Spain in 1492. Generations of traditions were passed on in that language, but did not arrive intact to the 21st century. Unfortunately, it's sort of like a typical, typical immigrant story for a lot of people, I think. My grandfather's family came from Greece, and they were eager to escape what they knew was oncoming war. And once they were here, they sort of you know, let the old country you know, stay where it was, and they really assimilated quite quickly into American culture. So unfortunately, a lot of the traditions from my family's roots were, were lost when they came to America. So the next generation didn't necessarily pass it on to myself and my siblings as much as I would have liked. So I really had to fight to learn about the culture, but it was very clear that growing up, my family was different than the other Jewish families I knew of. We ate different foods, we sang different songs. I heard this weird Spanish being spoken all around me, hmm. and yet, you know, I was living in America. I didn't quite understand it until I got, until I got older. So how did you start on the music business? You didn't turn at first to Ladino, you turned towards what? I actually trained as, a, as an opera singer. I thought I was going to be an opera singer until about 10 years ago, actually. I was schooled in Western classical music, on the piano, on the violin, um, and also vocally. And at one point in my career, I found myself in Israel singing, and I had the great fortune to meet a wonderful opera coach who happened to share the same Sephardic background as myself and he started teaching me the classical Ladino songs and I just I fell in love and when I returned back to America to give opera recitals in each of my opera recitals I had a little section of Ladino music and without fail after every single performance members of the audience would come up to me and tell me that the Ladino portion was their favorite part of the concert. Explain this. <laughs> Explain this. this. Why, how, why is it? Is it because the, the material itself is so good or is it just because you connected to it so well? I assume it was probably both, but the music is beautiful and not enough people have ever heard of it. The songs are funny, they're emotional, they're tender. They're the topics that songs are still being written about today. Songs about going off to war, songs about first love crushes, songs about unrequited love, family dynamics, heartbreak, death. I mean, there are songs that everybody can relate to. So you do not need to be Jewish to be in my audience. Everyone can take something away from the songs. Now, when you perform your Ladino material, you rock it up. I rock it up. <laughs> <laughs> How come? Well, it was actually very purposeful. When I decided to leave opera, I wanted to take a little break from music and think about what I would do next because for 15 years of my life, all, I, all I'd ever known was opera. So in my mind, I thought if I were to do music, it was either opera or nothing. And I didn't know that there was another option so luckily I took some time off and when I decided to come back, I picked up my guitar and the very first songs that came to my mind were these Ladino folk songs I had grown up with. And that really told me something, that that's where my heart was, that's where um, my, my musical creativity was leaning. But I knew if I was going to do Ladino, I wanted to do it in my own way. I wanted to find a way that I could reach my peer group because most people my age in North America have never even heard of Ladino. The time that I decided to start my band was a time when there was a lot of creativity happening in Jewish music, but it was mostly from the Ashkenazi side. Klezmer revival. Klezmer revival was you know, going through the roof. Klezmer punk, Klezmer jazz, Klezmer rock. Everyone was doing you know, these weird fusions of Klezmer music, but there were no Sephardic counterparts. 
And that's really how it started. I was jealous of all those Ashkenazi klezmer musicians <laughs> who were making a name for themselves and really getting their culture out. And I wanted to do the same for Ladino. There is a bit of a Ladino revival going on right now. Luckily, yeah, now there is. It's taken a couple of years, but it's happening. And it's not just with Ladino, it's also with, um, say, a wider definition of Sephardic culture in general. But with Ladino, I'm happy to say that there are several Ladino musicians now in America. There are definitely people in Israel and Turkey and Greece now. It's being taught in two universities here in the States. It's being taught in universities abroad as well now. I think there is a renewed interest. And I always laugh when I go on the internet now. New technology like Facebook, for example, there are Ladino groups on Facebook. Hey, is it a coincidence that your entire band is made up of Israelis? Not at all. I actually purposely seek them out because I think that Israelis have a really good knack for understanding the tension between ethnic music and contemporary music. Most Israelis I know grew up on Israeli rock, but they also understand the rhythms of the Middle East. So for me, it's such a natural decision to use Israeli musicians. So tell me like an outstanding performance experience you had, something that really touched you. There have been many, but I think one of them that stands out was performing in Spain, in Sevilla, wow. a few years ago. I think that what a lot of people don't understand is that for most Jews, when you ask them what is their, what, where is their homeland, I would guess that most people would say Israel. But if you ask a lot of Sephardic Jews, they would actually say Spain, still to this day, 500 years later. There is a very old Sephardic folk tale or folk tradition that some people still really hold true. They say that Sephardic families, when they were leaving Spain in 1492, they took with them the keys to their homes because they figured they would be returning very shortly. They had no idea that they would be kicked out permanently. So they took their keys with them in the hopes they would be coming back and 500 years later, a lot of families claim that they still have these keys passed down from generation to generation. So there really is this hope, this longing that one day we will return to Spain. And for me... Do you long for this? Uh, I do love Spain. I'm not sure if I would choose to live there now. But I think the, the longing of having wandered for so many years is so in line with you know, the the longing of Jewish history and Jewish people over the last thousands of years. I don't think it's surprising that that uh, there are Sephardic Jews out there who feel this this real connection to Spain.